So one of the um, questions that I get asked a lot, um, just over the past several years, um, I see it a lot on social media as well, is um, how do I make my chords sound better? And uh, I'll hear you know different keyboard players come up to me and say, man, I'm playing the exact same song that you are, um, but it just doesn't sound like what you're playing. What am I doing wrong? How um, do I, uh, you know, sound, get my chords to sound better? Um, how do I sound like you? How do I get from where I am to where you are? And uh, honestly, that's kind of a, a really a loaded question um, simply because of the amount of time and practice and, and just, uh, you know, years of experience that goes into it. But uh, as far as making your chords sound better, um, there is uh, kind of a, uh, a concept that will really help you, uh, and it's um, one that is very easy and very simple once you grasp it, and once you do, um, it will really help take your, your playing to the next level. It'll make your chords sound better. A lot of times when, when keyboard players uh, you know say that, they I mean, how do I make it sound fuller? How do I make it sound... Um, just uh, more, maybe more professional sounding. And a lot of that, again, has to do um, with this simple concept called inversions and voicings. And those two words uh, are really interchangeable. Um, inversions and voicings basically have to do with how do you play a certain chord. And uh, there are multiple ways to play any kind of chord. And you can do it in one hand, you can do it in two hands, you can change up the, the order of the way that the notes are actually played. Um, and that's what we call inversions and voicings. And when you change that, you change the way that the chord sounds. And um, pretty much those two terms are interchangeable. Uh, when I was studying classical music during uh, high school and college, I never really did hear the word voicings. Uh, it was more just inversions. And once I got into college and I started studying jazz uh, and that sort of thing, they really use the term voicings a lot. How do you voice a chord? How do, what does it look like? What does it sound like? And so again, uh, it's just uh, taking a chord and playing it different. It's the same chord, uh, but you're making it sound different based on the way that you invert the chord or you voice the chord. So when I use those two terms, just know that they're interchangeable. When I voice a chord, um, a voicing and an inversion uh, are basically the same thing. And so typically with a uh, kind of a beginning keyboard player, beginning piano student, um, when they voice their chords, uh, they're going to do it in a um, very... Um, you know, beginner fashion, and it's going to basically be what we would call a root voicing or a root inversion. And what that means is um, that it looks the same no matter what chord that they're they're playing. And uh, when we talk about a root chord or root inversion, um, if you take like a, a C major chord, for instance, uh, most beginning keyboard players are going to play a C, F, G chord progression kind of like this. They'll play C, and then F, and then G, and then back to C. They might jump down and play F, and then G, and then C. And that's what we would call root inversion. Now, the root, um, anytime you call out a chord, so you're going to play a C chord or an F chord, a D chord, whether it's a D major or a D minor, whatever letter that you call out, that is the root of the chord. That's what kind of holds the chord together. It's the foundation of the chord. And typically, a root inversion is going to, whatever that letter is, that's going to be the bottom note. So for example, if we took C major like this, um, the C major chord, C, is the bottom note. We've got C and then E and G. So again, this is a root voicing or a root inversion of the C major chord. If I went to F, F is the bottom note. So again, this is the root. This is what is holding the chord together. Um, it's what everything else is built on on that chord. So you could do an F major, you could do an F minor, you could do an F augmented, you could do an F major seven, you could do an F dominant seven. But again, all of those chords there, they're built off the root of that chord, which is F. 
So um, again, the root is just whatever letter you're calling out, that's gonna be the bottom note of that chord. And you can do it both in you know, one hand or you can split it into two hands. Now typically, um, when we talk about inversions, a lot of times inversions will be just a single hand. How are you inverting that chord in your hand? Versus a voicing um, typically is spread across both hands. That's really the only distinction that I know of between those two terms. An inversion, one hand, voicings, two hands. Again, you can voice a chord just in one hand. Like I said, they're interchangeable, but if you want to have a little bit of separation between those two terms, you can uh, just kind of think of an inversion as one hand, a voicing as two hands. And so I can voice this C major chord in both hands. Now I could play the exact same thing, like this, but that gets kind of, see this gets thick and muddy, and if I get down low, real muddy, real nasty. So here, but I can kind of thin it out, still hold the C, which is the root on this C major chord, and still have my normal C chord right here. So this gets back to where a lot of beginning keyboard players play. They play a C, F, G, and C. Again, this is just root inversions of the chords. And so if we were you know, playing any song, maybe, maybe the chord progression starts off with a, an F, and then a C, and then a G. And then it repeats. F, C, and then G. As you can see, you're having to move around a lot. And that is very typical of beginning keyboard players. Again, because that, you know, you only know what you know, and that's all you know. You know that that's a C major chord, and in your mind, you're probably thinking that's the only C major chord. But again, there are different ways to voice the chords. And so if you want your chords to sound better, you have to learn inversions. And the easiest way of learning how to invert a chord is to simply take the bottom note and you bump it up an octave. Now an octave is just eight steps away from whatever note that you're on. So here we're on C and we have to count the notes. So here's C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. So eight, here I am, it's another C. So here's a C, here's a C, here's a C. So again, C and C, that's an octave away. So if I took this C major chord, I've got C, E, and G, and I want to invert it, say up, I'm gonna take the bottom note, and I'm gonna bump it up an octave. Now I have E, G, and C. This is what we would call maybe a first inversion. Okay, so as you can see in here, it sounds uh, a lot, or not a lot different, but it does sound different than the root inversion, which sounds like this. And then you've got the first inversion. So I'm gonna take that C, bump it up an octave. As you can hear, it kinda sounds a little brighter sounding because we are moving up the keyboard. Do the same thing again, take the bottom note, bump it up an octave. It's even more you know, brighter there because we're continuing to move up. And then if we do it one more time, as you can see here, we're back to root position and it's very bright. So, but if you do it up, you can also do it down. So if we took a C, E, G, we take this G right here, we bump it down an octave. Now, as you can hear there, that, that sounds a little more uh, warm sounding, um, a little bit more foundational, I guess you could say. So you got the, the C, uh, the, the, the root chord, bump it down an octave. And then if we do it again, bump this E down an octave. Now we're starting to get a little bit kind of a thicker sound versus this. It's kind of medium brightness, but you come down here kind of warm sounding, and then if you go again, starting to get darker, and so on. Get down here, it gets real muddy. So what's nice about that is that you can take that inversion in your right hand, take the root in your left hand, and that's where you start to change up the voicing of your chords. So instead of just doing a, a root voicing, which would look like this, I've got the root in my left hand, and then I've got the root chord in my right. I can bump it down to a lower inversion. And automatically you hear there's a different sound there. 
back up, back down. I can even come down here. That sounds real full and real um, kind of thick sounding, mainly because these notes are closer together. As I start moving them apart, you start kind of thinning out the sound a little bit. And there you can hear that big separation between the sound. You've kind of got a low sound and you've got a high sound with nothing in between versus here, you've got that. So that's kind of the first step is learning the inversion. Again, you take the bottom note, bump it up an octave, take the top note, bump it down an octave, depending on how you want to invert the chord. And however many notes are in your chord, for instance, we've got this C, E, G, this is just a C chord. However many notes are in the chord, that's how many inversions, uh, total inversions you'll have. You'll have the root, then you'll have a first, then you'll have a second, and then back to the root. So again, that's basically your root or first inversion, I guess you could say. Um, in classical music, this is just root, and then the next um, one, which would be a second inversion, is actually your first inversion. So hopefully that doesn't confuse you. Just think of it as root, first inversion, second inversion. Now if I were playing like a, uh, a seventh chord, the reason it's a seventh chord is, a is another video later on, uh, but I've added the seventh of the chord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which is B. Now I can, I can have uh, four inversions instead of three. I've got my root position, then I've got first inversion, and then second, and then third. And then we move back up to root. So again, however many notes you have in just the chord, that doesn't mean to say all of the notes that you're playing at one point in time, um, you can have different voicings based off of that, but kind of that fundamental chord that you're playing, however many notes are in that fundamental chord, that's how many inversions that you can possibly have. So again, we've got our C, E, G chord there. Now, kind of the next step in uh, making your chords sound better is learning when to double notes. And doubling means just adding uh, the same note somewhere else in the chord. So for example, if we went back to this F, C, G chord progression, instead of just playing it in that root position, which is typical of very begin, you know, beginner keyboard players, F, C, G. Sorry about that. As you can hear, very kind of bright and thin sounding. Now one thing I can do, I can change up my inversion. I can do C. Sorry, I can do F, C, and then G. Automatically you hear a difference in the sound versus this. Kind of bright and thin versus. Sounds a little bit more warm. Again, because I'm changing up the inversion. Here's an F chord. Notice that this chord I'm playing took it and I bumped it down an octave. C down to C and then A down to A. So I'm basically in my first inversion here. I'm going to go to a second inversion on the C and then I'm going to go to the root on G. And there's nothing wrong with playing the root, you just don't want to do it every single chord. So again F. And now we're beginning to sound a little bit more um, full in the way that, you know, in, in the voicing of that chord. Now the next step in making your chord sound, you know, better is learning what notes you can double. Now there's some rules that you can follow um, both in classical music and jazz music on kind of the priority of what notes you need to double. Um, and, uh, you know, typically in you know, whether you're playing like modern praise and worship music or pop music or anything like that, um, you can usually double the roots um, of the chord. And so, for example, if I did this F chord, I could take the F and I could double it down an octave. So now I'm playing octaves in my left hand. F, C, G, while playing the same thing that I did before in my right hand. Now you can hear it starting to really kind of thicken up there. F, C, and G. And also one of the nice things about this is that I'm not having to move around a lot versus before when I was doing F, 
C, G. I'm having to kind of jump around the keyboard a lot there. Again, it's not a huge jump, but you are jumping versus here, I'm not having to move very much. F, C. So automatically you see here we've got F down to C. That's kind of a big jump versus F to C. My hand's barely moving. So again, F, C, G. So, you know, there you can uh, hear that that chord's beginning to really thicken up. Um, it's sounding a lot better than it was in all of those root positions. And it's mainly because I'm using these different inversions in my, in, in, especially in my right hand, and then putting it together as a voicing with my left hand. Um, and you can double not only in your left hand, but you can also double in your right hand if you want to. So before we were doing this, and I could add the A up top. Now it's starting to really get thick. And then C, and then G. So notice, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking whatever the bottom note is of my right hand, and I'm doubling it an octave up. So here I was just doing my F chord. Taking this A, adding it up top. When I go to my C, this G I'm adding up top. And then on the G chord, taking the G, and I'm adding it up top. So again, F, C, G. Now I could change that up and do F, C, and then G depending on what I'm going for. Maybe, you know, when I'm coming down to th this G, I want it to be a little bit more um, warm. Uh, maybe I'm gonna build into a new section of the song, and if I do, I might want to move up there, and instead of playing the F, C, G, if we're building up to uh, a new section that has a lot of energy to it, F, C, G, and then, Maybe the next section of the song, instead of doing F here, I can shift up to an F, C, G. And as you can hear, all of this, it's still the same chords, but I'm just changing the inversions and the voicings depending on what's needed um, for that particular moment in the song. So here, we've got a little bit more um, uh, high end to it. It's got a little bit more energy to it. If I wanted to add more energy, I could move up even more. So I've got this D. Maybe we're going to taper it down. Taper it down some more. Maybe even a little bit more. So there you can see how just changing up the inversion uh, really adds a lot of um, dynamic color um, to what you're playing. Again, taking these notes and the inversions and either taking the bottom note, bumping it up an octave, top note, bump it down an octave, and then doubling notes. Um, doubling notes is going to be kind of that second step in helping your chords to sound better. Uh, and then um, another thing that really helps is learning uh, substitutions. Now. When you have uh, different chords, you can substitute other notes um, within the chord based on what kind of chord it is. Um, for example, a major chord, say, uh, take a C chord, you can add or substitute a second into the chord. So we've got C, D, E, F, G, C, E, G. E is the third of the chord. Well, on this major chord, we can substitute the two, which is one, two, D. So you've got this D in here. It still has that major tonality to it, mainly because we're leaving the three out. We could leave the three in, one, two, three, which is the E. You kind of hear that dissonance there, it kind of bites a little bit. That's adding it in or substituting um, which if you've ever seen a chord chart, you might see something that says C sus four or C sus two. That means that you're substituting 
those notes in for the third typically. So you've got, uh, if you had a C sus2, you would have this sound, C, D, and G. And kind of a, you know, a rule, a general rule in, you know, modern music, um, especially whether it's uh, praise and worship stuff, whether it's pop and rock and all that kind of deal, um, you can substitute these notes in there whether or not um, it's on the actual chart. Um, if you're trying to just repeat a recording that you've already heard, then you need to make it sound like the recording, unless you want to kind of vary on it. But for instance, if it said just a C chord, um, depending on what you're going for, you could substitute the two in there, and instead of playing this, you could play this. So it's C, D, G. And if you wanted to, you could do a C sus4, the four being the F, one, two, three, four. And I know this is a little bit, for some of you, it might, you might be like, well, what's a two, what's a four? This gets into our scale degrees, and it also really moves into the idea of the numbers system. Instead of thinking in, in terms of letters with your chords, you start thinking in terms of numbers. That'll be a whole uh, another video that we'll get into later on. Uh, but on a C sus2, you've got C, D, G. On a C sus4, you've got C, F, G. And what you'll find here is that when you start using these substitutions, as you start changing chords, you start finding common notes within those chords. So, for example, an F sus2 or an F2 chord, sus2 and just 2 um, basically mean the same thing. So instead of playing F, A, C, I can move the A down to a G. So now this is an F2 chord. So we get F, G, C. Now if you'll notice, I take this C, I bump it down an octave, change my inversion. This F2 chord is also a C sus4 chord, C, F, G. So here you see that two chords share the exact same note. So I could do this, or I could do this, depending on what the chord calls for. Again, if I need a, an F major chord, I've got an F major chord here. If I need that uh, that sus chord, and then to maybe a regular major chord. Um, you can substitute those notes. And what that does for you is it begins to allow your chords to sound a little bit more full and the least amount of movement. That's the other kind of characteristic of beginning keyboard players is that because they're only doing root position chords, they're jumping around a lot. And as a keyboard player with a lot of these modern songs, you don't want to have to jump around a lot. You want to kind of um, stay in a, in a general area um, a little bit, unless you're having to play a lot more melodic stuff and accompany yourself. If you're doing classical music, um, you're going to be jumping all over the place because you're, you know, you're providing all of the, um, the, the melodic elements, the chordal elements, and the rhythmic elements. Um, versus if you're playing in a band setting, you're going to be providing kind of that chordal um, foundation. So, for example, we, if we go back to this F C G um, uh, chord progression, you know, if we started as a beginner, F C G. If you start inverting your chords, maybe invert it a little bit more. Maybe one more time. there you can see that it's starting to sound uh, a little bit better. You're thickening up the chords. Now when we start using these substitutions, you really start moving a lot less and having the same effect. So for example, on the F, instead of doing this, I could do this F2 chord, which would be this, F, G, C. I'm going to take the top note, bump it down an octave to double it. I'm now going to move down an inversion in my right hand. I'm going to drop the C and I'm going to take the G and put it on bottom. So here's the G. Instead of the C being on bottom, I'm going to bump down like that. Notice that I've got this, um, this F chord. I've got the, the root in my left hand. This is still an F chord because I've got an F, G, C. It's just a different inversion. And then I'm going to go to my C chord. Look how little I had to move in my right hand. And 
then I'm going to go to the G chord, but instead of doing just a normal G major, I'll do a G sus. So you see how little I had to move? I'm only having to basically move um, right here in this inner voicing here. F, C, G. Again, F, C, G. Again, this is a G sus chord. You could go to a regular G. You could change it up. Or. And notice that I kind of filled things out here. I moved up to the octave. I also added the fifth in. Kind of makes it real full sounding there. And again, this is kind of the, the full extent of what we've just learned. We're, we're changing up our inversions, we're adding our voicings, both hands, we're doubling our notes, we're adding substitutions, and it sounds a whole lot different than this. So hopefully that helps you. Um, again, just to kind of recap it, you know, if you want to work on your chords uh, and, and help them to sound better, you got to learn your inversions. And again, the easiest way to do that is to take a, a chord, whether it's a C chord, a G chord, whatever chord it is, and uh, you take the bottom note, you bump it up an octave, or you take the top note and you bump it down an octave, and you just continue to do that depending on you know which inversion that you want. Um, in your left hand, you can play the root of that chord in your right hand that you're playing. So, for instance, we got our C chord, we can bump it up an inversion, bump it up an inversion, and come back down. So, say I take this inversion here, I can take, I'm playing a C chord, I'm going to play C in my left hand. If I want to, and make it sound a little bit thicker, I can begin to double notes. So, I'll double the root in my left hand in octaves. In my right hand, I'm going to take maybe the bottom note and I'm going to double it an octave higher, like this. And then, if I want to, I can start to substitute um, different notes. And remember, on a major chord, you can substitute the two in there. So on the C, the next note up would be D, that would be your substitution. And as you can see there, that's a C2 chord, but that's also a G sus chord. I didn't have to move. So C, G, F, C, and finally G. And that's basically um, kind of a, a good start um, for helping your chords to sound better. Again, learning to listen, learning to use your ear. You know, music isn't just a, a sight thing. It is an ear thing. You need to learn to listen. Um, listen to the, you know, all sorts of different things out there and, and begin to learn what those um, sounds um, sound like and how they sound on the keyboard. And so again, uh, taking your inversions, um, doubling notes and substitutions, you do all of that uh, and that will really help take um, your chords to the next level to help you go to the next level as a musician uh, and you really will start to move on that journey of helping your chords to sound a whole lot better. All right, so for those of you watching, I'm, I'm not actually looking at my computer, so I don't even know how many um, uh, are checked in. Um, if you're watching live, also shooting this for some, uh, some other video things. So I think I've got, let's see, we got somebody from uh, Littleton, Littlefield, Texas, born to, we got a lot of Texas folks. Yeah, big state. Longhorns, there you go. Uh, let's see, I like using the doubling with the left hand. It sounds dramatic. Yeah, yeah, it helps to um, just kind of thicken up those chords. Now, the one thing that you do want to be careful of when you um, start to double things, you want to watch how low you get. You know, as I mentioned, if you do this, it's real muddy sounding. Um, even doing, you know, something like this still muddy 
It's getting a little bit better, but it's still muddy sounding. I could come here. It's not too muddy. It's, it's low. It's dark. If I shift down an inversion in my right hand, it's getting kind of low, not obnoxious sounding. I can even come down here. Now, as you start to go lower, one of the things that you'll want to do is thin out the amount of notes that you're playing. So if I were to do this, you hear how muddy that sounds. But if I do this, it's not as muddy. It's kind of muddy because of that. So you just want to be aware of how low you get um, with your uh, with your chords, or else they'll get kind of muddy there. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, I think the sus needs to resolve into the one chord, or maybe the five chord comments. Yeah, um, to, I, I grew up um, playing classical music, and in college, the college that I attended was very classical in nature. And that was always a mindset of, in the classical world, that a sus chord needs to resolve. And I don't necessarily think that that's true um, in, it depends on what genre you're in. If you're in classical music, then yeah, it's, it, it needs to resolve because that's the way they always did things. You know, you had, you had kind of that, that sort of thing. Um, where they do flourishes on um, sus chords, and they'd resolve it. Um, they've got that kind of feel. You want it to resolve. So, um, but in more modern music, especially because uh, so much of music nowadays um, has so much guitar in it, a guitar has an E tonality to it, and so a lot of times when they're playing an E, they've got these open strings that they're playing, especially that that lower or higher, depending on how you look at it, E string is going to continue to ring out. So if you're in the key of E, so they've got these notes that are continuing to ring out, which as you change chords, those become substitutions. So for instance, in the key of E, this would be E2 chord, this would be a B sus chord. That's the resolution there that you're probably talking about. It needs to move from a sus to a you know a one chord or a five chord. This would be um, an uh, C sharp, sorry, C sharp minor seven to an A chord. But you've got all this ringing out there. And that's because of uh, a lot of guitar. Um, stuff that's in the mix there. Um, so uh, I think more and more the idea of there having to be resolution from a sus chord, um, you don't necessarily need that. And especially if you get into jazz and things like that, there's a lot of times where stuff doesn't, doesn't resolve. Um, so let's see, anything else? I think that's, I think that's about, uh, about it. So um, if you guys uh, have any questions, you can leave it in the comments there always. If you've got um, uh, you know, other questions, feel free to send me an email, ryan at worshipartistry.com. Um, I'd be glad to, uh, to, to help you in any way that I can. Uh, again, uh, this is all about making your chords sound better. If you've got any other comments about it or any questions, hit me up. You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.